take a look at New York Central watercolor paper, and we're going to start with the cold press. One of the things I wanted to see was how this paper holds up when we tape, both as a way to mask an area off and as a way to secure the paper to a work surface. I also wanted to test how the paper holds up with my usual choice of masking fluid, which is Pibeo Latex Free. I'm applying it with a ruling pen. I'm going to do some tests on some different types of color. The first color I'm applying is yellow ochre because it is very easy to lift. This is M. Graham's version of that color. Really nice. My second color test is a quinacridone red. This is a staining color, but it is still one of the staining colors that has a bit of propensity to lift if you really want to lift it. My last color is thalo blue, which is known as a staining color and is really one of the absolute hardest things to budge. I'm also going to paint in a bit of a green over my tape. This is just to see how the tape lifts once it's been painted over. This is a cold press paper. It has a very shallow texture, so I don't expect to see a lot of interesting granulation and pigment separation if I concoct some pigment separating mixes. But I do think that it's important to test this as it's something that I like to do when I paint. So this is an opportunity to test mixing on the page. My colors are my quinacridone red, some ultramarine blue, and some viridian. Altogether, these different pigments should repel each other, separate, and interact in ways which are interesting and show lots of different pigment particles suspended after the wash dries. I'm putting a light wash of green over each of these painted areas just to see how different pigments layer on this paper. I'm concerned about whether I see a lot of reactivation of paint in my lifting color, my yellow ochre, and I don't see any reactivation of note when I layer each of these colors, so that's a really pleasing sign. Now I'm trying to lift each of my samples, adding water, waiting a moment, and using paper towel to create a lift. This is the one area where I feel disappointed with this paper. It really wants to hang on to all of the pigments, even the one that is very easy to lift. Technically, if I were working on one of my main choices of paper and doing this lift with yellow ochre, all of that pigment would come right up. This paper just really does not want to let go. I expect to see very little lifting on my quinacridone and my thalo pigments, but that yellow ochre again should come up no problem and should get that paper almost all the way back to white. So if lifting is part of your painting process, this unfortunately is probably not the paper for you, or you can adjust how you work on it. I threw down some paint and a little bit of salt to see what kinds of salt reactions I'm going to get. Salt reaction usually has more to do with pigment and water concentration than with paper, but I thought it would be fun to give it a try. I also wanted to see how this paper handles a little bit of damage control, mopping up excess water with the brush, just seeing if watermarks are very apparent or more hidden. And now that my masking fluid's dry, let's complete our masking test and let this fully dry for later. <music> While my cold press tests dry and do their thing, I wanted to take a look at the hot press version of this paper. I'm going through some of my most commonly used pens and pencils. 
When I use hot press, I normally mix media and mix materials, and a hot press paper that handles pen and pencil properly is just something that I consider really critical to whether I want to use a hot press or not. So I'm going through and making some marks with different types of pens that I favor. All of these are very good and really fun to use in conjunction with watercolor. I have a jelly roll, I have a micron in gray, but any color, gray, black, or brown, are all good. I have a sign pen with a pigment ink in it by Pentel. These can be a little bit tough to track down, but I really like them. They're a soft, flexible, fude style nib. And I also have a pocket brush by Pentel. So I'm just laying down some marks and just using some of these implements to do some really quick and dirty sketches. I'm going to go over these different sketches with some watercolor and just see how the ink reacts, if it dries down completely, if I get lifting, and also just looking at the quality of my lines. Do I see feathering? No. Is this paper chewing up the delicate tip of my pen? No. I'm really liking the way that this hot press paper interacts with my pen so far. And the nearest competitor of this paper, as far as I'm concerned, is probably Baohong Academy. And I am not really a fan of their hot press. It's okay, but it's really not one that I would reach for. I would describe the sizing as being a little bit gummy, and I just feel like that sizing has sort of a sticky quality to it that I don't know if it gunks up my pens, but I feel like it's going to. So I always wind up using dip pens if I reach for that paper. It's just not my first choice, and I don't think it's a versatile enough hot press to recommend for beginners or for people who mix media or for people who might be new to hot press paper. It could be a turnoff if you make that your first budget hot press. This paper is giving me none of those problems. The sizing doesn't gum up the works with my pens and pencils skitter across this surface smoothly and beautifully. I wanted to take a look at some watercolor pencil and just see what kinds of interactions I can get there as well. Watercolor pencil can be such a fun adjunct to watercolor painting and sketching. And sometimes I just like to use watercolor pencil as line work. Sometimes I really like to lay down color and see it spread and really try to liquefy those pencil lines entirely. So I wanted to throw in some watercolor pencil for just a few of these tests. I have also grabbed up two of my favorite general colored pencils. So I have a polychromos. I usually use these in neutral colors, darks, more as a sketching pencil that is permanent and not going to lift into my watercolor. And one of my favorite types of colored pencil is the drawing pencil by Derwent. These are a little waxier, a little softer, and I wanted to do a little bit of burnishing, just a little bit of value experimentation to see what kind of texture this particular paper puts into my pencil lines. And I would say it's a very minimal texture. Drawing on this feels a lot to me like drawing on regular Stonehenge paper, which is absolutely fabulous for colored pencil. So I really think that I've found something that has a nice response for ink, for pencil lines. So any kind of line and wash, any kind of mixed media approach to watercolor that still stays very transparent, I think you could do much, much worse than this really budget-friendly hot press. My water-soluble colored pencil really activated and liquefied so beautifully on this paper. These Derwent water-soluble colored pencils are not even necessarily the greatest thing in the world. They're just what I have, just what I use. If I was going to replace my set, I would probably opt for something else. And still, I'm getting such a beautiful, beautiful result even with this less than ideal pencil on this surface. 
I would say that I like this hot press much, much better than Bao Hong Master's Choice, Bao Hong Academy, all of the typical Bao Hong offerings. And this is surprising to me because I had such a strong suspicion that these papers are in fact Academy until I got them in my hands. The texture of the cold press feels a little different from Academy. It's a little bit more machined, and I don't think I like it quite as well. The texture of the hot press is way, way, way better than Academy, so I suspect that this is either Baohang white labeling for Jerry's, or this is another company. This is another paper entirely. I can't really say for sure. I'm just really pleased with this hot press, and I'm really satisfied with the cold press as well overall. The hot press isn't gummy, and the cold press releases tape beautifully. We don't have the tape release problem that we have with pulp papers. We don't have the tape release problems that I've had with Legion Stonehenge Aqua. The one downside to this paper is the cold press has that one-sidedness that I'm not a huge fan of, but it, this is even cheaper than Baohang. So the one-sided nature of the paper doesn't start to be as much of an issue. I feel like this paper really sort of surpasses Stonehenge Aqua. So overall, I'm just seeing really beautiful liquefaction on my colored pencil. I'm seeing really nice layering of watercolor over ink. I'm seeing no feathering on my ink lines, and it feels good to use a pen across this surface. I don't feel like it's snagging or ruining the tip of any of my commercial pens. A dip pen would also be great, I have no doubt. So those are some of the mixed media things that I wind up doing when I reach for hot press. Another thing that hot press is really good at is when you want to work in an extremely controlled fashion, when you want to layer dry layers of paint and nearly dry layers of paint on top of each other, as in a tight, clean, scientific botanical. So I'm not going to paint that now, but I'm going to kind of do the sort of things that I would do if I were painting specific flower petals, if I were really getting tight and precise with my paint. So I am painting wet on dry, I am removing water from my brush, I'm removing fluid from my paper. My brush is a facilitator, my brush is a tool and a means of water control, and my brush is dry as often as it is wet. So what I want to do is really see whether I can manage my water really aggressively just get in there and really limit, blend, scrub, lift, control those edges, control the concentration of pigment within a wash, and really get a little bit overly aggressive with this. Kind of push this. See, how dry can I go? How much can I noodle? How much interference can I get away with? I also want to see how these delicate and transparent layers look as you start to build them up. So I'm letting this first layer dry completely, moving on and experimenting with some other colors. This is that same approach, mixing some color within a single wash, but using that brush both wet and dry to control the application of paint control the thickness and the distribution of color, and really start to do some bad behavior, re-wet wet areas. Can I get away with this without getting cauliflower? I'm really impressed with how inexpensive this paper is and the level of control, noodling, adjustment, interference, all that stuff that I'm able to get away with. I'm kind of shocked. So this is for the price, for its price point, probably my new favorite hot press. 
My favorite hot press overall, I think, is still Blick Premier, Waterford Hot Press. I really like that, but this is kind of a close new second. I have to experiment more with this. I can't really commit to that, having only used it a little, but I'm really, really impressed. Again, impressed for the price that this paper is. So as a mixed media paper, and as a tight, controlled watercolor sketching and drawing paper, I think this is a fantastic beginner paper, study paper, practice paper, and it's one of those times where, let's say I'm doing a botanical and it just turns out glorious on the surface, I've totally won because it's cotton, it's archival, it's totally adequate for display and for sale as well as for study. I'm layering a mixed yellow over the yellow that I've already layered. These colors are very close together, and what I want to see are specific, clear areas of overlap without bleeding, without reactivation, without feathering. And I think this paper is giving me exactly what I want here. So this paper, like the other, is a bit slow to lift. But if you are using your hot press paper for one of the things that hot press maximizes, one of the reasons that you would choose hot press is to be able to do detailed, layered, controlled paintings with very little texture, very little interference from your paper surface. And I think that this is really coming through. We see those clean edges, distinct areas of overlap, you can see how this would be very, very helpful to tight, focused, botanical artwork. And you can see from my line work and from my description of how it feels to make these lines that nothing feels like it's being stopped up or disrupted by the paper line work in pencil or in pen feels very uninterrupted and very fluid. And getting all of those things in the same place is really kind of getting the complete package. As with the cold press, I decided to test masking fluid, tape and tape resistance, and a little bit of salt reaction even though, other than masking fluid, I think those are things that don't come up for me as much when I use a hot press. I don't tend to work wet in wet to the same degree that I do on cold press, so I don't get a lot of buckling. Taping and stretching is much less important overall, and I don't tend to do salt reactions on hot press so much, though when I do use salt reactions, I sometimes do opt for hot over cold press because I find that hot press paper overall kind of shows some of those salt textures just a little bit more beautifully. The salt is kind of forced to hang out in the wash in a different way. So if you like salt reactions and you haven't tried them on hot pressed paper, I encourage you to give it a shot and see if you like the way they turn out. It came as no surprise to me that this paper handled masking fluid just beautifully, with no problems whatsoever, using a rubber wipeout tool to remove the mask. Masking fluid removed beautifully and cleanly from the cold press as well. The texture of the cold press version is not my favorite. It's not even my favorite in budget papers. But because it is so very flat, so minimal and machined, you could make a really solid mixed media paper choice out of either New York Central cold or hot press. I was able to get some really beautiful line work on this paper in spite of the fact that it is a little bit toothier and it is a little bit textured. Pen lines didn't feather too badly or break up too much. They're more brilliant on the hot press, but the cold press can serve the purpose of a mixed media paper and can hold up to a bit of pen and ink. 
So let's take a moment and recap what we've discovered about this paper. Our cold press version of New York Central has a very machined, consistent, and inorganic texture to it. This cold press texture is also extremely flat. So if you are expecting a paper that really supports dynamic on-page color mixing, this is not that paper. However, this paper is extremely friendly for mixed media and pen and pencil editions. You can flexibly go back and forth between watercolor and line work, even on this cold press version. Layering is absolutely great, and unlike one of its close competitors, Stonehenge Aqua, this paper is extremely friendly and durable with mask and tape. New York Central Cold Press has poor lifting capabilities. In this regard, it's very similar to another competitor, Bao Hong. It is possible that this paper is being white labeled by Bao Hong, but it is a bit different, both from Master's Choice, Artist's Grade, and Academy, if that is the case. It is also completely possible that this is manufactured by a competitor. This paper is also a terrific quality product for a budget price. Now, as with Bao Hong, this budget friendliness is undercut a little bit by the fact that this cold press paper is solidly textured on one paintable side and smooth textured on the other. This can be a blessing or a curse depending on how you work, but it does mean that if you opt for another paper, you are able to get two paintable, equally textured sides in a lot of cases. So for a study or practice paper, to get that cold press experience and to be able to maximize it further, sometimes a less budget paper actually is a more budget friendly option. You have to do your own math. Now all this said, and with a lot going for New York Central cold press, I think I would still opt for Baohong or Baohong Academy if I had to choose a single-sided budget cotton paper. I just don't like the texture quite as much as I do on Academy or on Master's Choice. If I want things to be very flat and very friendly to pencil, I think I would still pick Academy. There's just something a little bit less basket weave about the texture on the Academy paper. So this is a personal preference thing, but that's how I would describe that difference, and that is the difference that tilts me still slightly in favor of Baohong Academy. Let's turn our attention to the hot press version of New York Central. This is where I think this paper really shines. We have a smooth and consistent hot press texture. We have a very pen and pencil friendly surface. It is a pleasure to draw on, and I could see creating drawings on this paper that never even materialize into watercolor or wash. We've got great layering on this paper. I can really feel solid and confident building layers up and letting layers dry in between additions. As with the cold press, though, we have very poor lifting capabilities. This can be really frustrating if you rely heavily on lifting or on certain types of blending approaches, but this willingness to hang on to pigment can really also help you start to build up complex layered surfaces slowly. This is a great hot pressed paper at an absolutely great price. I can't think of any paper in this budget space that does a hot press quite as well as this New York Central. Would I trade it in for my Waterford? Would I trade it in for my Blick Premier? Would I trade it in for Canson Heritage? No, but it is really, really good for what it costs. 
Both of these papers can be purchased in a multitude of formats. By far, the best price that you are going to find for these papers is if you take advantage of Imperial Sheet Multipacks. Jerry's sells a 10 and a 50 pack of this paper, and it seems to be available exclusively through them. As of the time of this video, a 10 sheet multi-pack of Imperial 22 by 30 inch sheets is $37.99. I would feel good about getting the cold press for that price, and I would feel really good about getting the hot press for that price. I know that this video has been detailed and extensive. I really hope that this level of detail helps you make some good, confident decisions with your paper purchasing power. Paper is so important to our results, but there are lots and lots of ways to get to that good result. This, I think, is a solid and good one. I'd love to hear about any of your experiences using New York Central, and if there is a paper you would like to see me break down and review and discuss, please feel free to let me know in the comments. I really appreciate you sticking it out and hanging out with me today, and I cannot wait to share some new insights into some new materials with you sometime in the near future. Until that time, take care, stay safe and happy painting.